All right, so hopefully third time is the charm. Um, I, I've set up this whole uh, automated process, so I don't need to edit these videos um, manually, given that they, the editing process for them is something that's going to be the same for each one. And because I want to take the editing process out of the equation, that way the... Uh, the opportunity to redo or make a change or an edit is just not in the equation. Instead, I have to just recover or deal with it and do better next time, um, which is very important for these type of videos because otherwise, with those points of friction, probably not. Problem. Uh, I, I don't have it in me to like keep that consistent. Um, some people do. I don't. Um, <laughs> so I, I was working on that um, yesterday. It actually took my whole work session away um, from other things. Uh, and I thought, I'm like, okay, I can roll the dice. Let's see if it works first time. I did some tests. They seemed like it worked. But apparently, I should have done a test that was longer than like 10 seconds because there's some major audio, video, desync issues. So I spent the... Well, I did get a good work session in today that I'm going to talk about very soon. Uh, it actually went very well. Some cool things happened. Learn, learn, learn some interesting things along the way. Uh, sorry, I'm rushing a tad. Just want to get past this part. Um, yeah, it kind of put me in a kind of a bad mood because I've been troubleshooting this for the past like two, maybe three hours, uh, about like two hours. Um, which is pretty annoying because I'm not doing anything like too far out of the ordinary with the tools that I'm using. Uh, so I don't know why it took so long. None of the Google, none of my research resu results really gave me anything very actionable. It was a lot of trial and error. All right, uh, back into what I got done. So, uh, the first part I'll bring up is. Uh, it's something that kind of happened at the end, but uh, it was based off of a note that I had during my last work session, and that is to ha have some sort of bookmark um, so when I return, I can pick back up where I left off. I'm going to search for a better term than bookmark because it's not really like where I am, but it's like that next step that was like on, you know, the next step. Um, yeah, or potential next steps. That way when, when I return, I can be like, oh, that's what I was going to do next. Cool. And it gives me context. I can go straight from there. Uh, otherwise, I start up and I'm like, uh, and it's a little trickier to get going. Uh, I got some good things done, though. So one big thing I'm happy with is some order of operations, operations things that I really kind of ironed out that, that put the uh mm, that brings well takes pieces of data um that i have within my system that and it brings them closer together um which might seem trivial but is actually pretty useful when you're wanting to follow the life cycle of different things if it's all spread out over the place well it's still possible to track that down it just ends up a lot uh, a lot more difficult to work with and to, to pick apart. Um, so I was able to do that with things like the, the stretch dead zone. Um, I think that was the main one. But uh, another thing I ran into was data kind of uh, position um, or availability or just how it's kind of put within the code. And there was a big difference that it made where I was able to take something that I might would have to like override or redo or have a whole system built on top and just changing that data from being very local in the method to storing it, it cover that base entirely. Um, I, I'm going to try, try to uh, merge back into what's being, what, what is being shown on screen at this point. So, um, uh, one, one quick thing before I do that, though. I was able to really fall back on something that I 
started to build a rule for, and that is with a switch case, only put things in there that have to be in there. So, because uh, it was starting to grow, and I was starting to put things in there, I was like, this is getting pretty big, does this have to be in here? Um, and so I was able to identify that, move it out, and keep the switch case small and minimal and uh, built for what it's useful for, rather than trying to use it for everything. And ending up with kind of like this really heavily indented mess that's hard to work with, and a lot of code is siloed off, or or what have you. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. But on, on to like the features that were developed. So, uh, as I kind of mentioned uh, last session. Uh, there was going to be some opportunities for some pretty quick progress in terms of uh, yeah, uh, usable features. And that ended up being very much true. So we have, uh, I think at this point, three DOFs that are interchangeable now um, with minimal input uh, nonsense to be able to get to them and access them and use them, uh, which is really, really cool. There's some visuals that need to be done for that to be more apparent, and still some a few systems that really need to be ironed out. But as you can see, during those really quick kind of sped up tests, I'm able to get, um, I'm able to get, you know jump between those uh, different ones, uh, being the stretch cursor, the backhanded stretch cursor, and the reach cursor. And if you're like, what are those? And it's maybe too hard to see in the video, you can just go to dofdev.org, right there. Shows all the pseudocode for them, uh, GIFs, everything. Um, yeah. Uh, a big thing that I changed, and you can see me kind of finishing up those final changes there, was making, kind of taking out the cursor part, because the cursor isn't important at this point. Part. This is more of an extension of your hand, um, or in this case, glove. So you, you will have a glove that you know stays with your tracked hand, but then there's a kind of a virtual, virtual one that goes out and interacts with things. Um, so I, I kind of refactor things to reflect that. Uh, yeah. One thing that I was pretty happy with, and you can see me doing it right there, is I'm kind of decoupling the input rather than, uh, which will make it easier to rebind as needed. Because uh, a lot of times, if there is just a bool that's happening, like it, it's kind of weird to put like you know other con dot grip button dot frame down way down in that chunk. Um, and it's better to just give it a name. Assign it to a bool, give it a name, and all of a sudden I don't need to put a, a comment there that in indicates what is happening for this if statement because it's built into the boolean. So it, it, it self comments my code and it makes it easier to swap out and change and be aware of like, wait, what, what inputs is this class using? And that way, yeah, that way you can e quickly identify what it's using, change it, modify it, all very straightforward. Um, another thing that I ended up doing is uh, a feature. Um, so even though we made <laughs> pretty good progress, we were able to even get another feature in. And this one was a new one. This one hasn't been done before. It was more than just like a, a, an interchangeable interchangeability system, I guess. You can kind of see it happening here. And it's kind of uh, an extension of the paradigm of you know lifting up a mouse, right? Imagine you've reached your limit of where it can go, you lift it up, and then you can place it back down, and then go from there. But it's more than that, which is really cool. It's also able to, when you lift it up, it's not that it just drops itself in space entirely. Instead, it becomes one to one. So it's almost like you have an extension of yourself away out there that is only going to move just as intensely as you are in your own space, uh, rather than having that problem based off of the rotation where it scales radically. 